we started to think of deep learning in the year 2000. And it wasn't because we figured something out that was new. It was because of the internet, because the internet has been in use for a while, that we had enough patterns, enough knowledge, enough compute power to actually allow computers to be smart. 2009 was the first time we really paused and said, oh, this is real. It was, uh, if you ever want to search for it, it was known as the CAT paper. The CAT paper was when Google issued a, a white paper that basically spoke about an experiment that we did where we took enough compute and we told it to watch YouTube. We didn't tell it what to look for. We just said, go and watch YouTube. And then a tiny bit uh, of time later, one of them came back and said, I found something. And we had to write code to understand the neural network to see what it found. It found a cat, based, of course, YouTube. So it found a cat, but it found what being a cat is. And so it could find literally every cat on the planet. Well, at the time, we published it as unprompted AI. And uh, because we didn't tell it what to search for. But of course, as you can imagine, using the same algorithm, we could find every human, every Ferrari, every yellow car, and so on and so forth. 2016 was the breakthrough. For most of us, it was the idea where we are today with language models and transformers and so on. Started in 2016, the most pivotal moment for most of us where we realized it was very, very real was when we won the world championship on the game Go. And that was quite something because Go is not a game you can code. It's a, go it's a game that you need intelligence to be able to win. I left Google in 2018, wrote my book, Scary Smart, in 2020 to say that this is way bigger than humanity is giving it attention. 2021, after Scary Smart was out, I would beg my contacts. Remember, I was chief business officer of Google X. I knew quite a, a few people in the media industry. And in, in 2021, when I told them I wrote this book about artificial intelligence, they wouldn't put me on TV. They would go like, nobody cares about AI. 2023, they were all begging everywhere. CNN, you know, ABC, whatever you have, you know, everyone was asking me to be there because it was the event of the year. A few things will happen this year. One is what we call aperture. So basically the size of data that you could give AI in the past in a prompt was a few lines. Now you can give it millions and millions and millions of lines in context. You can give it PDF documents and videos and, and it gets intelligence from that. The second is what we call agents and agents are AIs talking to AIs. So last year, we were talking to AIs telling them what to do. This year, AIs are talking to AIs. Yes, last year as well, but this year it's the name of the game really. Which basically means you can talk to one AI and say, book me a, tr a trip to this wonderful city called Riga, and the AI will do everything. Which is the third A, by the way, which is known as prompt or text to action. You used to prompt them and they give you back knowledge or content. Now you can actually prompt them and they will give you back an action in the real world. The C and the D is complex mathematics and deep reasoning. We were not even as smart as they look. We have not cracked those yet. I do better math than AI today, but I won't by the end of the year. And deep reasoning was their ability to understand things like if it takes one towel an hour to dry, it doesn't take 10 towels. Uh, 10 hours, it takes the same amount. It's deep reasoning. So the stuff that you've got in algebra, we've improved drastically on that.